Hey all, more work on the transit seats in my G-Van. I put this double in a while ago and I finally tracked down a single that's got the right quick release feet and everything. So yeah, we're gonna be installing that seat. So this double is installed fairly close to the wall there. I could just install the single seat here. That would be the easiest option. But what I'm going to do instead is move this seat so that its left bracket is in its right floor mount, shifting the entire thing over here. And then I'm going to take that seat, I'm going to install it so its left bracket is in this left bracket hole, and then I'm going to install a new mount where its right leg is and a new mount where the double seat's right leg is. Because that'll have the option then of having three across by having the two here and the one there, or just having the one there, or just having two over here. So all of my options allow the seat to be shifted over that way to give this area as much freedom as possible. Because if I just put the single seat here, if I only need the single seat, it's still kind of in the way. Whereas if I put it over there, it gives me the maximum amount of open floor space. This is important because one of the things that we're gonna be hauling in here is kayaks, which need to go all the way down to basically the dashboard. So if the single seat is here, it's partially in the way, but if it's against the wall over there, it gives us room to get those kayaks in, which means that the three of us, I and my partner and the kiddo, can all go kayaking with the kayaks in here easily. So the first thing I need to do is pull up the carpet and pull up the rubber mat underneath it, get the two seats in the other position so I can mark the floor and start drilling holes for them. Then I gotta make brackets for them. Then once I have them bolted down, I need to cut holes in the rubber mat and in the carpet and put the seats back in. All right, so there they are hooked into the hard mounted ones and with the other ones not mounted but cut out around. So this is going to be the spacing. It puts this one out a little bit more than I'd like. I'd actually like it if it was shifted over so that gap was smaller, but it's not a big deal. When I mounted the two originals, I was lucky and they just about slotted down into the ridges in the floor. These do the exact opposite. Each one is half on a ridge. So if they were all on a ridge, I could kind of live with that. If they were in a valley, that would be great. But kind of half on a ridge means I'm going to end up probably smashing that ridge flat with a hammer just so that they'll sit level and solidly. But it totally works. Like that one is going to be the same or greater distance from the wall. The, the panel on the wall is loose right now to get the carpet out. So the distance isn't accurate. And then this one is still a reasonable distance from the edge here. So that's totally fine. And like I said, this setup gives me the maximum modularity. And because these aren't crammed up against each other, which I never thought was going to happen, but you know, yeah, I always have that slight worry that I've got something really wrong. Because these aren't crammed up against each other, people sitting in those two seats won't be hard up against each other, which means that in each of these three seating positions, even though the seats are fairly narrow, they'll have some shoulder room and hip room because they're not all boom, 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 right up against each other. So I drilled a hole for the front, just because I kind of want to see where it is. But what I need to do now is make reinforcing plates for the underside and um, washers for the top. I hope I still have some of the seal that's the exact right size to fit in here because that would make my life much easier. And then once I've made those, I'm going to get everything in the right place, drill the holes so that I know where they mount, and then tonight I'm going to spray paint them so that tomorrow I can just bolt everything together and they'll be done. The rubber mat and the carpet should be very quick to trim around those, and then this will be all 
done and in. All right, sorry about that. I turned this off was what was supposed to be for a moment and then I got in the groove and completely forgot to turn it back on again. But the brackets have had the ends cleaned up so that they're a little more sleek. They're less foot smashy at the end. Same at the other end and then they've been cleaned up and painted. And then I've made my brackets. I've got the four welded on nut brackets that are gonna go under the car, under the van. And then I've got the top ones that the bolt's going to go through. Um, these are all just been sprayed on this side. So they've got to dry. Um, I think I'm kind of done for the night because of that. Because the paint's got to dry on this stuff. I think I'm going to go and hammer down the floor in the places where those brackets need to sit. Maybe. If I can figure out how to do that without one of the brackets to judge that. And then I think I'm done for the night. I was hoping to get this all done and in tonight, but I failed to account for, hey, you got to put paint on it and it's got to dry. So I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. Quick lunch break video. These have had the other side painted. They're going to get a second coat. I also, these brackets, the brackets that I'm using on the van, I bought as an extended one that had two rows worth of brackets and cut it off. It was the cheapest way to get four brackets. But because of that, because of where the bolts were, there was no rearmost hole, which would have been fine. I probably could have just put a bolt here. But I'm paranoid. I'd like one as far back as possible, you know, to give maximum protection against tipping force. It like, just makes the lever shorter for that to happen. So I drilled a hole here. Um, this hole is a little bit wider than the bolt that I'm using. I'm using a half-inch bolt to give it a little bit of play. And this slots into there like that and then back here this hole is one size bigger than this hole to also give me a little bit of play and adjustment and then there's going to be a washer on the the bolt here and then these plates have the nuts attached so once i drill the holes in the floor and the, there and there the bolts can go through go to these plates and attach them down you can see i'm using some really beefy steel and a large enough plate to really distribute that force so that it's unlikely to be able to pull this through the floor at all, no matter how hard the impact is. Basically, if this is ripped out of the floor, the impact's so bad that there's bigger problems. I, when I still had the brackets in here, I drilled a pilot hole the front of both of them with a small drill bit, and you can see I, I made sure to barely go in at all. And then to find this hole on the other side to make sure that there's no clearance issues, you just take a piece of wire or use something bright colored so it's easy to see and just bend it like this so that it can't drop all the way through and just do that. And then now on the underside of the car, you're looking for a bright piece of orange wire rather than a tiny little hole in a black surface. So I've already gone underneath and looked. That one's fine, easy to reach. The I measured back from it. The other one, easy to reach. This one... This is fairly close to the ridge. The beam that runs the van, this way on the van is basically like here. So this one's going to be tight. I may even have to trim that plate a little bit to fit. We'll find out. And then the rear one's similar. The problem is... Under the van, there's this heat shield over something. I don't know what. But I'm going to have to pull this off to get at that one corner and hopefully these bolts will come off and not just snap. I have no idea what's under this. There's some wires that run in and there's less wires that run out the other side, but I don't actually know what's under here, so we'll find that out. So I'm out of work and back at it, and I took that cover off under the van, discovered it's the ABS pump, the rear ABS brakes. And the spot I need to get at is 
spot I need to get at is in there. I don't even know if you can see the orange wire. So that's going to be interesting. So for that, and also for that one over there, because there's brake lines and fuel lines and whatnot running right there, I'm going to put a stop on the drill so I can only drill in so far. I'll show you how I do that. It's so back on the other side, but threading the plate up in here is going to be very, very interesting because I've got to get it through and around all of these brake lines. All right, so this is how I'm going to keep from going too far in. I've got a piece of stock so that just a little of the drill bit sticks out. This would be nicer and go a little smoother with brown stock, but square stock is what I got, so it's going to have to work. I already have a pilot hole, so this is just going to be a case of ram this down, and then I have to kind of waller out the hole a little bit, just because this is the exact same width as the bolt, so the bolt doesn't really like going through. All right, so I've got that one drilled and ready. Unfortunately, I don't have the hardware I need. So I have a bunch of these bolts. These are all grade eights. A bunch of this size, and I have a bunch of this size. Unfortunately, this is too small. By the time it goes through the washer, the bracket, the floor, the plate on the other side's thickness, which is this again. Sorry, it goes through the washer, this plate, this thing, the floor, the plate thickness on the other side. It's got about enough threads for half the nut, which is not enough. This one, on the other hand, even after it goes through all of that, there's still some of the shoulder left, which means that the plate can't be snugged hard against the floor. So what I actually need is more of this size, which I don't have. I also have lots of grade 8 washers that are too wide. I can kind of force them in, but not well, and I don't like it. So I'm going to go and find some of these smaller ones, like I've got on here in the back as well as some of these, and then I'm going to install these rails. So this is on pause for tonight, um, which means I'm going to be kind of rushed tomorrow trying to get this together. So I have these seats for picking up my friends. All right, yesterday was pouring rain, today it's blowing like hell, so we're in the van. Yes, I put these in yesterday, I didn't film it because it was raining so hard, I got soaked to the bone laying under this thing, tightening them down. But the Rail over there was bolted down, the rail over there was bolted down. You saw me make the plates, it's just grade 8 bolts going through those, pull them down. And then the rubber mat that's under this was sopping wet because I'd left it outside. So it's in the garage drying, I just rolled the carpet forward and cut the slits so I could put the seats back in because I needed the van yesterday with these seats. So that's going to get a better job done of, I'm going to put the mat in, cut the mat put the carpet in smoother and whatnot, but you see the basic idea. I'll do all that off camera because it's all the same stuff I did on the previous seat video. So this is the setup with the two seats. Um, you know, this is the one that was over there. This is the new one. This one can still be attached over there. That one looks like it's canted over, but when you sit in it, it feels flat. So I think it's just the floor is a little off. I may go in and try and flatten the floor some more. I may not. I'm going to decide that if it becomes a problem. I wasn't expecting quite as much of a gap between them. It's not a problem, I just wasn't expecting it. I may take advantage of that to make either an armrest or an armrest with storage or something that fits there. And I've been thinking about if I do that, um, making it so that it can be at armrest height or can be installed level with the seats so that it can make a long bench for like sleeping on if the kiddo wants to sleep on this or whatever. So that's it for this project. I'm really happy with that, and it also gets it out of my garage and out of my way. So we'll call that a win. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.